Hi, in this recording I want to show you how to use the PMT function, which is the payment function. It's uh, one of our financial uh, functions. In previous uh, tutorials we looked at the VLOOKUP function, the IF function, uh, we also uh, considered uh, the absolute and uh, relative uh, cell references. So we're look, working with this uh, sample of data where we have a number of different students. Previously, we considered their age. In the PMT function, we want to buy something. So let's consider perhaps buying a car. And so we're going to type in the price of the car. Let's go ahead and uh, uh, delete the, the, the previous work. Uh, let's say that, you, uh, that John uh, is looking at buying a car that's uh, 24000 dollars and uh, we'll just uh, randomly select uh, uh, some prices uh, somewhat uh, realistic of uh, an entry-level car uh, that is new. So we are going to try to borrow money from the bank to purchase uh, this car. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, uh, do that. Excellent. And so let's fill the rest. So now we have some sample data to work with. So the payment function helps us to figure out giving a price and the duration of the loan, we can figure out what will be the payment. Now, of course, the bank also is going to dictate to us what is the annual percentage rate of uh, the loan. So let's go ahead and uh, figure this out step by step. We're going to use the PMT function. And after setting uh, the opening parentheses, we can see that uh, the function requires arguments like the rate, number of payments, and then the present value of, um, of our pur purchase. So let's go ahead and uh, uh, fill these values in. Because we are looking for a monthly payment, Everything in this function needs to be represented at the monthly level. Now, here's how this is going to be important. When uh, purchasing a car, the bank may be uh, uh, flexible on the uh, rate, maybe ranging it between 6% and 15%, depending on your credit score. So let's assume for a minute that this is going to be a 6% loan. However, this is the annual percentage rate. And in the year, we have 12 months. So to figure out the monthly payment, we have to divide that by 12. Next, we're going to specify the amount of payments. Now, the amount of payments will mean number of years that we are going to take the loan for multiplied by 12. So in this instance, we're going to take a loan for four years. Therefore, we multiply it by 12 to express how many payments will be made. So next, we're going to provide the value of what we're purchasing, in this instance, the value of the car, which happens to be in cell C3. So as we press enter, notice that Excel automatically sets this as the negative value, uh, meaning we are making a payment. We're not making the money, we're making a payment. So this particular payment function says, if you want to buy a $24,000 car, at 6% interest rate, and you will borrow the money for four years, your payment will be $563.64. Okay, that's a nice use of the payment function. Now, a couple of thoughts here. One, why is this uh, negative, and can I make it into a positive because I just have aversion to red numbers? Well, this is called the cash flow process, and for the bank, this actually is an income, whereas for you, it's a spending uh, amount. So depending on who is uh, generating the spreadsheet, this could be required as a negative value or a positive value, which is why in our exercises, sometimes you are asked to put uh, a minus in front of uh, either the present value, or sometimes we put a minus in front of the PMT function altogether. And as you do that, the perspective changes. The numbers, the math does not change, but the perspective changes. Now it becomes an income uh, instead of uh, a, a, an item of spending. So let's go ahead and see what might happen 
if we fill this function for all the other cars. Here we go. Some cars are more expensive than others and the monthly payment changes for them. Now what if at this point I wanted to change either the interest rate or the number or the length of the loan number of years. If we look at our payment function I hard coded the 6% and I hard coded the number of years. Now that is not typically what you want to do in a spreadsheet because again uh, in a spreadsheet you want to keep the changes to a minimum. Every time a human being makes a change there's likelihood of a mistake. So instead let's go ahead and take these values outside of our table and we'll type, we'll type in here years of the loan all right so years of the loan and then uh, our next uh, row is going to specify interest rate so now the interest rate of course is going to be uh, the way banks deliver it which is typically APR or an annual interest rate Let's go ahead and in this instance set 6% and years for the loan we chose four years for a sample data. How am I going to implement it in this function? Well again this is the function then these are the arguments inside of parentheses. I'm going to replace the 6% with the uh, cell that contains um, our uh, interest which is C16. So now I've referenced C16 as the interest instead of hard coding it into the function. We'll do the same for the number of years, which is C15. Again, this is helpful because now I get to modify perhaps the numbers without having to redevelop the wheel inside of the function. So I can experiment. I can say what will happen if I end up having six years of payments. Well yeah the payment changes quite a bit. Now let's see what happens though if I try to fill this function from the top to the bottom. I am getting into trouble. So what happened? Well if you consider the first function C16 when I filled it it became C17. Now notice there's nothing in C17. It's an empty cell. So the problem here is that I, as I am filling the functions, these relative cells simply are extending now to cells that have nothing in them, like C20. C20 has nothing in the cell. So of course the solution here is to use absolute values or absolute references. So absolute references here means that C16 has to be pinned onto the spreadsheet and this pinning happens when you put dollar signs in front of uh, the uh, in front of uh, the row and the the column so the column is C row is 16 I now have pinned it exactly on the spreadsheet I'll pin also the second one the C15 by providing dollar signs and now when I press enter and now when I fill the rest of the functions things look as expected. Notice that the only thing that changes it's that last parameter or argument because that is in column C all these parameters are different for each cell. And now notice when I change to a two-year loan all the numbers are changing and when I change to a six-year loan all the numbers are changing and how convenient for the person that's maintaining the spreadsheet uh, uh, and, and we are decreasing the probability of an error being made. So hopefully this is uh, helpful in understanding again the absolute versus relative references but also the PMT function. Thank you.